Now let's talk just a little bit about theories of media which emphasize this idea of multiple equilibria. Many theories focus on how media inform citizens or maybe persuade them, and how media monitor government. We've discussed these in other videos. This is all well and true, but still there's yet another way to think about what media does. The key idea of multiple equilibria suggests that two or more different outcomes may be possible, even if we're starting with the same set of objective facts. Let's see how in these situations media can make a difference. To ask a simple question, can we expect social cooperation? Well, if think, to think of this in terms of multiple equilibria, it could be the case that you're willing to cooperate if you think all the others will cooperate, but alternatively, if you expect they won't cooperate with you, you won't cooperate with them either. In that case, we might have then these at least two possible equilibria, one being an equilibrium where virtually everyone cooperates and the other being an equilibrium where hardly anyone cooperates. It really all depends what people expect. And here, of course, you can see a role for media. If media are reporting a lot of instances of cooperation, this may shift the focal equilibrium to indeed be one of more cooperation. But if media are reporting that everyone is corrupt or lying and cheating, then this may push the situation into the case where no one expects cooperation, and again, the level of cooperation then turns out to be quite low. Another possible example of multiple equilibria, will there be a riot or revolution? We'll take a country or region where people are really pretty unhappy. There still can be multiple equilibria. That is, you may revolt if you think a lot of other people will, but if you don't think anyone else will, well, then you'll just stay at home. So again, there are two possible different sets of expectations, one being where a lot of people revolt and the other being where hardly any people revolt. What is it that people will actually expect? Well, this too can depend upon the media and what media are reporting about what other people are doing or thinking or feeling. And that's yet another case where media can affect the choice of multiple equilibria. Media can also reveal what economists call common knowledge, and this is a very precise concept in game theory. Rather than define it here formally, let me just give you a simple example. Let's say you're in a developing country and a lot of women have quite a few children, and women may even feel pressure to have a large number of children, in part because they think that the other women in society also want to have a large number of children. But then say a new TV show comes along, it's a soap opera, and it shows women leading independent lives and maybe having a smaller number of children, or not having children at all, or not getting married and having children, and it turns out this soap opera is highly popular, because women are interested in this new way of showing women's roles in a traditional society. All of a sudden, it may rather quickly become common knowledge that maybe all the other women out there don't necessarily want to have so many children, and indeed there is evidence, which we discuss in some other videos, that soap operas and other television programs actually can lower the fertility rate, and some of this is a common knowledge effect. TV and other forms of media have the power to spread new norms really pretty quickly. Just two simple general points here. First, a lot of media is about what other people think. And this makes good sense in an economic framework once you start thinking about multiple equilibria and also this phenomenon of common knowledge. Furthermore, the influence of media does not always come through direct information about policy or government. Of course, very often it does, but very often the influence of media is telling us about ourselves and about what our peers and what our neighbors think and feel. And in general, media can have a lot more influence than just a simple information model might suggest. For this video, I've drawn upon, perhaps somewhat loosely, but a very good paper by Chris Coyne and Peter Leeson called Read All About It, the role of the media in economic development, and that piece is available online.